Uh, 2.4 gigahertz range supports up to 14, 22 megahertz channels. The FCC allows 11 in the U.S. Um, so channels 1, 6, and 11 are the preferred non-overlapping bands. So if you look, um, it's kind of hard to read because it's pretty small uh, up there on the monitor, I know. But um, if you look here, this is uh, you know the the range of bands, and you'll notice that you know they you know for instance, one goes from uh, 2.401 to 2.423, 2 goes from 2.406 to 2.428. So there's some overlap there, but if you take bands 1, 6, and 11, right there, and right, well, that actually is ranging over. Um, basically, 1, 6, and 11 are going to be the, the, one that don't, the ones that do not have overlapping uh, frequencies. I think uh, if you actually break down the the ranges that they cover, it's actually, um, it's actually, there's a couple other ones you could use, but these are the, the best, you know, to get the most for your money, more or less. And if you have to set up a, a large mesh design of multiple access points to cover a large geographical area, you're going to want to use something like this over here, um, where you've got, uh, you know, channel one right here, channel six here, channel 11, channel one, channel six, channel one, so that you know, none of the, the channel 1s are overlapping each other, none of the channel 6s are overlapping each other, none of the channel 11s are overlapping each other. And there's a, there's a variety of techniques that can be used, because you have to keep in mind, too, that you know, this covers a two-dimensional model. If you've got a, a single floor building, if you're trying to uh, put down access points in a multi-floor you know, skyscraper, you also have to keep in mind that you know channels above these are going to leak in, so you have to use um, some other methods to kind of make sure you don't have the overlap of the same channel. And then the uh, the five gigahertz range includes 23 non-overlapping bands. Um, five gigahertz range is uh, for 802.11a, which is less prevalent these days. When I get into uh, those in just a second, I'll kind of explain like why even though the 5 gigahertz range seems to be a better option, we, we ended up going with the uh, the 2.4 gigahertz range. No, oh, and actually here we are. So um, to, to step onto that, 802.11a and 802.11b came out about the same time. Uh, as I said before, 5 gigahertz for 802.11a, 2.4 gigahertz for b. Uh, you'll also notice that they came out at the same time. The the bandwidth for A is is much higher, up to 54 megabits per second. Again, that's a, a theoretical uh, data rate, not necessarily what you're going to get. And then only 11 megabits uh, per second for uh, for B channels. You got 20, 30, uh, you know, non-overlapping channels. With B, you've only got three non-overlapping. Um, and then I guess since the uh, because of the frequency differences, you actually have slightly more outdoor range, outdoor and indoor range with uh, with 802.11b. Um, but the the difference is kind of negligible, especially when you consider the the other benefits that you get in, in speed and non-overlapping channels. The reason that B became more prevalent um, than A at the time is because of the the type of silicone. Whenever these were first first deployed, the type of silicone that you needed to uh, to make 802.11a equipment was less prevalent and less available um, and so since there was such a high demand for it when it first came out this equipment was readily available can be manufactured easily and cheaply so this became the uh, the dominant standard even though the uh, the technical benefits of a are, are quite a bit higher and then uh, later b was uh, was reformed to include 802.11g which is backwards compatible with b it's got a, a 2.4 gigahertz RF band again. Um, it's this time the, the bandwidth has been up to the same as A was originally able to get at 54 megabits per second. You still only have three non-overlapping channels. Um, your range is uh, more or less about the same as, as B. You know, 95 meters, 100 meters. They're they're, they're pretty much exactly the same. Uh, but you get a higher speed out of G. And then on 802.11n, at the time of the writing of the book we're going over, uh, 802.11n was not a um, a fully recognized standard yet. It hadn't been completely uh, concreted down and isolated to you know this is what we're gonna what we're gonna use. Even though a lot of vendors were deploying their own 802.11 equipment with the presumption that you know certain standards were gonna become accepted. Now 802.11 in, however, is uh, is a standard. So I uh, I did not do it, any additional research to, to kind of update this, but um, I know whenever I took the test a year ago. 802.11n wasn't really 
was it really questioned? Certainly not deeply. Wireless in general wasn't uh, either. But you may want to take a quick glance over what the current um, current accepted specs for 802.11n are, so that you know, in the case they do kind of railroad you with the question about that, you're going to be prepared. Um, but you know, it's using both 2.4 gigahertz or and or 5 gigahertz. Um, you got your range, and then your your bandwidth. I think is actually the the big uh, benefit on n and. Um, I can't remember the number of the channels, but I know you have a lot more than three non-overlapping channels in, in with the new standard as well. So as a result of that, um, some of the, the problems that we're talking about, like trying to, to make sure that um, this stuff gets meshed out right, those are only going to apply to the older uh, B and G standards, which are still very much available today. So th this is a problem now, but perhaps a few years down the road we may not have to worry about this so much because uh, in and perhaps another standard to follow it will will be more dominant and so that's just the the quick basics on wireless networking uh, we'll go into a little bit more in chapter 18 now um, but any you got any questions on that one yeah cool